Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ho Cheng, and I'm I'm be honored to uh, here to present uh, topics that's uh, in the next ten minutes or so, and I'll be talking about how biometrics can help to build the trust to prevent online fraud. This year, 2020, has been a year full of biometrics uh, activities relating to uh, digital IDs. In the coming years, we believe that uh, identity powered by biometrics uh, will become the essence of any trusted online services, and we call it Identity 2021. So let me start with uh, by talking about uh, digital identity. And uh, what is digital identity? As you know, that this is something we use to access the online world. And it is uh, it can be accessed from any channel, could be on the web, could be on the mobile device, could be anything that you uh, uh from where you are and the beauty of it it's a uh, available 24 hours okay not only it's being used for online services it is also gradually making our traditional identities redundant okay why because it's used daily almost daily for everyone in real time using mobile online payment for example and the user experience in uh, digital identity is uh, excellent and it's so convenient. But it's also a point of attack. I will come to that a bit more later on. So we believe the online fraud essentially is identity fraud or majority of them are identity frauds. Online fraud during a transaction is usually non-proactive. The most proactive and uh, productive online fraud, of course, is identity fraud. Fraudster can use the trial and error. They can do it to steal your identity or to pretend to be you. So the status quo is a huge playground that we're talking about online for them to steal your identities, to register fake accounts for money laundering, getting access to accounts, your accounts and data, such as uh, onboarding using a stolen ID or fake ID, transaction authorization by an imposter, and user consent not granted by genuine user, and so on and so forth. So those are typical identity fraud. So if we take a look at the identity life cycle. Identity fraud can take place at each of these components. This is very typical here. For example, uh, during onboarding, a user can uh, use a, a fake ID or stolen ID to register an account. And uh, once account is established, then of course, a lot of things would happen afterwards. And also during the usage of the uh, identity of the identity life cycle, transaction can be authorized by a hacker or by, by means of spoofing. And uh, transaction or, or payment loss or whatever damaging to the data would happen during this uh, process. The other one is the uh, sales support during the life cycle. This is probably the weakest link uh, in our opinion because this is when an attacker will be able to re-establish your identity or your account by means of uh, faking your ID or spoofing the, uh, the identity to, to take over your account. And this is by far the, the most, the weakest link in the whole identity life cycle. So let's go to, how do we build trust? You know, I put down the title, Are You There? And uh, and I said, this is the first step towards a trusted online uh, services. You means 
this is identity validation that it is really you, me, Ho Chang. Are you there? Means user presence uh, validation that you are physically there. Like I'm here because you can see me making the presentation live. In the old days, face to face is the way of uh, making trust. So, you know, you need to go to the bank to open a bank account. And this face to face interaction is so called trust. It is a trust that you have. And the other one is if you change or if you move to a, a different place, you want to change your address and you still need to go to the counter in person, fill in a lot of forms, etc. And that's the user concern we're talking about because you must be physically there to carry out the transaction. And secure session in the sense, because when you go to the bank, it is a secure environment. That's why the transaction that you do there is perceived to be secure. And of course, in the old days, when you do the transaction, usually you perform during the banking hours. That's why your account is okay with you when you need it, it's, or it's, it's not active if, not you, if you do not activate it. So trust is based on face-to-face -face or user presence. However, when it comes to online service, you really don't know who is at the other end. So making use of making sure who is out there or are you there is crucial for secure and trusted service. When it comes to online service, there are a few important issues that need to be considered. For example, non-repudiation. From, from the customer's point of view, I must be in control. I must be in control. You need my user consent for any transaction to take place. But from the service provider's point of view, it's you who perform the transaction. So it goes both ways. But the truth is online transaction is effective one-to-one -one and is secure only when with the user presence. So the challenge is how to enforce you are there or it is you know who is out there for an online transaction. This is the first issue. The second issue is the vulnerability of a user presence is when you're talking about online service, it's usually unsupervised. This is a 24 by seven around the clock availability, making it very prone to attacks. So attacker will work around the clock try to, when you are less aware or when you are asleep. So the challenge is to be sure that your account or identity would not be active until you want it to be. So there are many ways to do so. For example, you would do this. Uh, uh, you see this, a lot of this uh, already online. When you would, inquire some information online, you'll be asked to make sure you click on this button that I'm not a robot to, pr to prove that you are not a software spammer. And when you log on to, with your user name and password, and you probably sometimes need to click also the uh, something like image selection to make sure that you are not a robot trying to hack the system. And of course, if your account is blocked, you probably will need to perform a face-to-face -face video chat session with a custom support. Of course, if this is restricted support, then you probably need, out of luck, you probably need to wait until the next day in order to do so. So as you can see that uh, effective user presence is, is lacking. So we need to have a supervised, unsupervised face-to-face -face mechanism around the clock. So what about biometrics? Can it help? Yes, biometrics can help. And uh, biometric, of course, as you all know, that uh, it is uh, your like way you look, uh, like your face, uh, the way you sound, like your your voice or your fingerprint, and your your iris, your face, and so on and so forth. Those are the biometrics that we're talking about. Some of them are hardware based, some sensor based, some are software based, some are very as active, and which require the user cooperation, the other one is passive without user knowing it, and some is com some are convenient, some are more secure. And of course, face by far is the best choice 
for many reasons. One of, first of all, it is excellent and intuitive user experience, and it requires only a standard webcam. And face live detection or user present check is the most effective. Why? Let's say you visit your grandma over the weekend. You walk up to the door and you ring the doorbell and your grandma peeps into the spy hole on the door. And now try to hold up a photo of you in front of the spy hole or wear a mask in front of the spy hole. Do you think your mom, your grandma will open the door for you? Of course not. That is so-called live detection. We, she or her, he, uh, whoever needs to know, is it really you out there? This is what we call biometric live detection. So the next one I want to show you, it's a, a demo on face life detection. This is the industry standard of what a face life detection would look like. First of all, let's imagine the scene that you are in, pretending that your granddaughter comes to visit you and she just rang the doorbell and you are now peeping through the spy hole and then let's watch what kind of responses you might have. So first of all, you will see this and you say, huh, who is this guy? He looks like my granddaughter's boyfriend, right? This person wearing a mask until then you say, oh, hello, that's my, my dear granddaughter. Okay, that's a real live person. And then what? What is this guy doing uh, holding my granddaughter's picture? And you know it's a picture. It's, it's, you do not know who is behind the picture. And then here we go. This is the live person. This is my dear granddaughter. So, and then if someone putting in front of the peephole a video like this one, then you say, who's this guy holding a video of my granddaughter? You should know this information because after all, your granddaughter should be this person. And you say, yeah, now I see your hello granddaughter, please come in. This is live detection using facial recognition. So let's go back to the identity life cycle one more time to see how we can add trust to the life cycle using biometrics. Of course, during onboarding, you can check whether or not this is the ownership, ownership, uh, the original owner of the identity document for onboarding for eKYC. And during a transaction, you need to do facial recognition with live detection to ensure that this person actually use, give you the consent to carry out the transaction. And then for account recovery, for example, you need to do so by means of uh, facial recognition with live detection to make sure that you are actually the account owner. So this brings the trust to the identity life cycle. User presence is essential in protecting your digital identities. So biometric life detection is the best way to ensure user presence. Biometric life detection adds the trust with high assurance levels throughout the whole entire life identity life cycle. After all, trust is knowing who is out there, right? Yeah, so just a, a bit of background before I close down, close my presentation. We were founded uh, way back in 1998 and we've been doing biometrics uh, uh, since then. Uh, we founded in uh, Nuremberg, uh, Germany. We have over 20 years of experience in the doing biometrics, especially on face and periocular. We introduced the world's face, the first face life detection about 10 years ago. And now, of course, there is the ISO standard on life detection. And yes, we are here to promote and help online trust using biometrics. And thank you.